Hello good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today I am bringing you my final impressions video for the tier 6 premium German battleship, Prince Eitel Friedrich. Um, now, uh, if you were in Discord last night, you may have heard me, well, read that um, I couldn't get into my World of Warships account for a good portion of yesterday, and that is true for <laughs> um, around 7pm till around 9.30ish for whatever reason. I could not log into my World of Warships account. Um, it was where I could log into it on the website, but I couldn't log into it in game. It was aggravating, really infuriating. I thought I, was, I actually did go play some Skyrim for a while um, in anticipation of just not being able to log into my account for the rest of the night. Thankfully, around 9:30 ish, I could log into my account and where I could record this B-roll um, for the final impressions of the Friedrich. So before I get uh, talking about the Friedrich too much, let me run you through my current captain build of her. My current captain build of her, I have um, perimeter maintenance, MLG turrets because the turrets do turn pretty slow. BFT and AFT for trollish AA and adrenaline rush as this is a squishy ship. And if you have a squishy ship, you sh should definitely equip adrenaline rush. I would I would recommend a equipping adrenaline rush on any ship really. But especially if it's on a, squ a, a squishy ship like the Friedrich. Alright, so for my modules for the Friedrich, I have main battery, uh, main armaments mod 1, then I have damage con mod 1, aiming systems mod 1, and then damage con 2. Alright, so the Prince Eitel Friedrich, what is my final impressions of it? Well, I'm going to be honest with you guys up front. Is this a good ship? My honest opinion I think the Prince Eitel Friedrich is a good ship is it an amazing ship no it's not should you buy this over something like the war spite no you shouldn't should you buy this over something like the uh, Dunkirk no you shouldn't I would recommend Dunkirk before the uh, Prince Eitel Friedrich it's not an amazing premium but in my opinion it is a good premium especially right now because you can get it and with it you get the nerves of steel campaign and you can easily grind out the missions and get um i, th I think it's three um tier six premium ships quite easily with the prince Eitel friedrich i mean right now it's a really good deal that's why i would recommend you would buy it right now because you can get some steel and uh i think like three tier 6 premium ships with the uh, campaign so that being said let me run you through why I'd say she's a good ship but not a, an, uh, an amazing ship she's a good ship because one she has a very high top speed 28 ish knots in a tier 6 battleship that's really good that's really fast for a tier 6 battleship her primary guns are really accurate, especially for a German battleship, and especially for a tier 6 battleship. Yes, every now and then the dispersion is a bit atrocious, but the majority of the time it's going to be pretty neatly clustered, especially if you take the aiming systems modification, which I do recommend you take. Um, next up, her secondaries are actually pretty nice, um, although if you don't build into them, they are kind of a fireworks show, but if you do want to build into them, she does have some pretty decent secondaries, especially for a tier 6. Um, nothing amazing though, but they are a plus. And then her AA is absolutely trollish. Uh, you, that's why I would recommend you take BFC and AFC, because pretty much you can keep a carrier occupied <laughs> for a fair while in a match. Uh, unless of course you have tier 2 or tier 8 then they just won't give a crap. <laughs> but um, tier 7 and tier 6, especially tier 6 carriers, you will be the bane of their existence. Um, now let's get to the downsides. Armor, not great. Um, but she does sit kinda low in the water, so that does mitigate some damage, but she's still really squishy. No turtle back armor either, so, you know, that German aspect of her is gone. Her guns are 13 inch guns. They are small. They are good at pinning angled cruisers and broadside battle sh uh, tier 6 and tier 7 battleships and 
tier 8 battleships from close, almost suicidal range, but they can do it. And if a battleship does show you their broadside and you aren't almost at max range, you will do a fair amount of damage to them. But that being said, broadside cruisers, unless either you know you manage to hit the water right before they enter the cruiser, you're gonna overpin them. But if they're angled, you you will smack the crap out of them. But then you get to the tier eight ships. The tier eight cruisers, the angle slightly, you're gonna bounce. The tier eight battleships, unless they show you a flat broadside and are within 10, 11, 12 ish kilometers, you're gonna bounce. Um, at range, you don't have a hope in damaging a tier eight battleship besides hitting their superstructure. So, when this thing gets up tiered, it's like playing with a BB gun at range, but at closer ranges, she'll do okay as far as damage output, but then her armor comes into play there, where if you get to a close range fight with a tier 8 ship, you aren't going to be lasting for much long, for very long, and should probably be going in for the ram. Which, granted, you can do, because this ship is pretty dang fast, <laughs> even by tier 8 standards. Um, but... Yeah, she, she is really squishy. So, those are two of the major down, downsides that I see in her. And, I mean, she's fun to play. I, I have fun playing her. She's really fast. She's maneuverable. She has accurate guns. But, going back to the guns, they are only 13 inches. Plus, they have a 28 second reload. I mean, I get that it's a tier 6, and they can't cut the reload down by a lot, but, you know, a 25 second reload would be fair. Because even though you would be firing, you know, 3 seconds sooner, um, they're still only 13 inch guns. You know, they bounce off of angled tier 8 cruisers, they bounce off of, um, tier 8 battleships at range, they, heck, they, they, they bounce off of any battleship that's angled, you know? If a ship angles to you slightly, unless, like, it's, I don't know, a tier 5 or a tier 4 ship, um, which I don't think tier 4s, no, tier 4s can't even get, um, plus 2 matchmaking, unless only if they're divvied up with a tier 5. It, it's gonna bounce, I'll be honest with you guys, and I do think this ship does need a reload buff. Um, like, like, to Wargaming, I understand that it's a, a, a tier 6, and you don't want to make it crazy with the, re uh, with a 25 second reload, but I, I don't think it'd be too much or anything. It's definitely nowhere near OP right now. Right now, it's where I w it's in. If you would put like um, underpowered on one end of a scale, and overpowered on the other end of the s end of a scale, and say like there's a zone in the middle that's balanced, she's toward she's in balance, but she's almost an underpowered in my opinion. You know, um, and I don't know if Wargaming thinks she's on the, you know, imbalanced but almost on overpowered, because I certainly don't think she is, you know, I don't break 100,000 very often in this ship, um, I usually get around 60 to 75,000 in this ship, which I get that it's a tier 6, but still, I, I still do, like, toward 100,000 when I play Arizona in Warspite, and, but in, Prince Otto Friedrich, I do more towards 60-ish thousand per game. And, you know, the guns are really accurate, so you would think it'd be more toward 100,000, but it's, you know. I, I played five games before, um, well, not right before this, but uh, before I could, I got kicked out of my World of Warships account, I played about, uh, it was, no, it was four games. Uh, first game, uh, here, I wrote it down. First game, 76,000. Second game, 62,000. Third game, 89,000. Fourth game, 72,000. So, my average damage for her is kind of within that range. You know, every now and then I'll have an amazing game, get a, well over 100,000. That happens to everybody, you know. You do have those good games, and then you have those crap games where you do like 20 or 30,000. But for me, my medium damage in the ship is hovering around 70-ish to, I'm sorry, 60-ish thousand. So, and again, that's, that's, that's not terrible, it's just not, you know, I'm a battleship, I feel like I should be doing more damage than this. It's not because I'm missing my targets, I'm hitting my targets, it's just that the the shells are not doing a whole lot of damage when they hit, which is why I say, 
she could use a buff to her reload speed. Um, other than that, like I said, the speed's great, AA is great, uh, secondaries are good. Um, you would have to invest in, into the secondaries to make them great, but I wouldn't recommend that because um, if you get close enough to anything in this ship to use your secondaries on, uh, you're, you're kind of pushing it there with this ship because she is German. But she doesn't have that um, amazing German, uh, amazing German armor. But I mean, you know, if a destroyer rolls up on you, if it's not like a tier eight or tier seven destroyer, the secondaries will put a hurting on them. Um, and, and if you do run like a a nineteen part captain in this ship uh, for the lulls, uh, it probably will be better in the secondary department because if you have like a, I don't know, if, well, if I put like my car first captain on this thing. The secondaries would probably perform a lot better, but uh, it's a tier 6, so I don't know why you would... I mean, because this isn't the ship that goes silk clubbing in, like Sean Horst is a silk clubbing ship. This isn't a silk clubbing ship, alright? Um, but, like I said, like I've, uh, I have said before, it's a fun ship. I think it's fun to have a fast, a maneuverable German battleship with very accurate guns. Um, even though it can be aggravating at times with the way the shells do bounce off of other ships or overpin cruisers because it is really it's not as bad as uh like i said in the second impressions video it's not as bad as roma when you overpin cruisers because um prince Arthur friedrich's guns are actually accurate uh unlike roma so you can at least consistently overpin cruisers and do damage to them even though it's not a lot of damage but it's better than roma's dispersion where you you know, you finally manage to hit a cruiser, but then you just get like one overpin because your other eight shells miss. And, oh, speaking of being up tiered, um, you can switch to HE and you do do a bit better, but the chance of fire on the HE shells is a bit, well, more than a bit low for a battleship with only eight guns. So, you'll do a bit better in terms of, you know, HE spam to their superstructure, um, and you will occasionally set a fire every now and then but it is on the weaker side um so it's not too viable an option but it's better than just bouncing everything with ap uh so that was a very honest <laughs> a very very honest final impressions of the uh prince idol friedrich um so again just summary wrap it up um it's a good ship is it worth buying over the other tier six premium battleships no, I would definitely recommend if you're looking for a, a tier 6 premium to um, grind either, you know, captains. Well, I guess if you want... There's... Yeah, no, there's not another tier 6 premium German battleship. So if you want uh, a captain trainer that's set tier 6 for German battleship, I'm, you know, I'd say get it. Um, or if you just want a fun ship to go derp around in and, you know, either roll with a secondary build, roll with a troll AA build. Yeah, you can do that with this ship. Um, but if you want a ship to go out and, you know, do like rank sprints in or anything really competitive in it, this isn't the ship for you. The ship for you would probably be either the War Spite or the Arizona. Arizona's a tough cookie with some serious firepower. Uh, War Spite is, well, it's, it's the War Spite. <laughs> you know, it can overmatch, um, uh, most, uh, it can overmatch, uh, most ships that it met, that it meets bows. Uh, it's got a lovely hill, and um, it's fairly tough. It's on the squishy side with the worst bite hill. It's not a lull hill, but it is a better than average hill. It's, it's a nice hill. Um, so yeah, anything competitive, it's not really the ship for the match. I mean, I've, I've some of you guys in Discord have been saying you've been doing pretty good with her in ranked spreads, and you know, more power to you if you are, but I'm just finding that I'm not. Um, I'm doing much better in War Spite and Ranked Sprints than in with, print, oh, with, uh, with Prince. So that's that's just my experience my experience with her. And plus she's only $30. Um, and I know <laughs> that some of you, you that, that is a lot, but for someone like me who, you know, I play mostly at high tier and I buy a lot of high tier premiums, it wasn't too much, all, you know, for me to pay 30 bucks for a tier 6 premium. And plus, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, right now you can get the uh, Nerves of Steel campaign and you can complete the, I, I can't remember what the campaign's called, but it's the campaign that gives you um, the the previous uh, tier 6 premiums that they release uh, around New Year's time. Uh, like the the Graf Spee and the, oh god, what's that? 
I, I can't remember the other two ships name, names, but yeah, so if you get her right now, you do get some pretty sweet stuff with her, you know, still, of course, it's much easier to get still in, in this ship with the Unnerved uh, Still campaign than going through and playing, you know, ranked or um, clan, clan wars. So she's great for the resources right now, but, um, you know, after this, just straight up compared to other tier 6 premiums, you should probably get a different tier 6 premium like I mentioned. But, you know, okay, that's that. I know, I'm, I'm rambling a bit and <laughs> repeating a bit now. So that's my final impressions of the Prince Eitel Friedrich. A good, a good, uh, a good tier 6 premium, but not an amazing premium. But most certainly not a bad premium. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe. We're on our way to 1,500 subs, just past 1,200 a couple days ago. That's amazing, guys. I really, really appreciate it. And at 1,500, um, actually, let me know what you guys want to see at 1,500 subscribers. We agreed that's going to be our next milestone back when we passed 1,000. So let me know what you guys want for 1,500. So again, thanks for watching. I hope all you guys have a great one. and hope to see all you guys in the next one. That rhymed. That's my new outro. <laughs>